Hey friends, I'm um, just going to do a quick update, I don't know how quick it's going to be, about my word vomit writing project. So I don't know how many of you know, so I'll just repeat what it's about. In 2012, I started a writing project to write as many words as I could. Specifically, I wanted to write a million words in a thousand sets of a thousand words. So a thousand, thousand word essays. The point of that was just to be prolific, just to give myself a sort of containerized project brick by brick to get to volume i didn't really have any specific goals or targets i didn't really apart from the volume uh, i just let myself write as guided by my own taste uh you know so i wasn't writing gibberish i was a lot of it was introspection because that's what i kind of needed at the time and uh, a little bit of um speculation and thinking out loud and talking about my life lots of introspection lots of self reminders lots of musings about my problems and and how to solve them um so i started in 2012 then i got a job in 2013 and then i kept writing and i was more or less fairly consistent throughout my working life uh there are breaks here and there that sometimes I, I go a couple of months without writing and then I get back into it. Sometimes I write every day for a few weeks. Sometimes I write like 10 in a day. Those are like a couple of times that happened. And um, there was a month in 2017, November, I was doing Nano Remo and writing a novel in a month, which I did. Uh, but so I wasn't doing any word vomits when that was happening. And then I think I fell off the wagon for a while. Then I was tweeting a lot, and so I was getting a lot of satisfaction from tweeting, so I hadn't been doing any word vomits in a while. And now I feel like, okay, I'm at 784 essays out of a thousand, which is like, you know, it's more than three quarters done, but that's still 200,000 words to go. And I have Twitter, and I have my YouTube, and I have ebooks to write. And so I'm just kind of reorienting and trying to figure out what's going on. And so I made the decision a few days ago that, which is, which is something I've been procrastinating on for a long time, I made the decision to read all of my word vomits again, which I have attempted a couple of times. Uh, I even may have some review notes in like a blog post somewhere, in my notes somewhere, in a notebook somewhere. I'm not sure. I've, I've thought about it now and then. I've attempted it several times. I've tried tagging them and like got tired and given up halfway. Like every attempt I've made to try and process this huge sprawling beast has, it's never quite been successful. I always get something out of it, out of the, out of the process of going through my stuff. It's effectively a mind city at this point. And it's unruly and there's no street directory and it's just chaos. And I mean, they're like attempted maps, but it's very, you know, it's hearsay. It's not very precise. And uh, since I started using Roam, I'm, I found that, I, and you know, I, I had a personal Roam, a private Roam before I started my current public Roam. And I attempted to do this on my private Roam as well, where I would copy the entire word vomit. So I actually copied, I think, almost 300 of my word vomits into my private Roam. And it started to break Rome at the time. I don't. I think it would be able to handle it now if I tried. But it started to break my Rome and everything was... I mean, it wasn't breaking. It was just really laggy and unpleasant experience. And so I just kind of abandoned that. And now what I'm doing is I am making notes. So I'm... And I've, I've uploaded live stream videos you may have seen or may not have seen. Of myself, you know, I, I, I get my blog on one side of the screen i get my room on the other side of the screen and i start scrolling through the blog post i look for things that are interesting i copy the url and i copy the notes of whatever i think is interesting and sometimes i may have like follow-up tasks for myself like oh that's an interesting quote i that's an interesting question i should answer it in a youtube video potentially or in a blog post or whatever and then i make a to-do item which rome just lets me do that really well which is uh I find it keeps me going more than I had done in my previous attempts. And also, I can live stream it. And I do find that when I'm live streaming and there are like some people watching it, it makes me feel kind of motivated to stay on task and like not like get switched to Twitter and spend all my time on Twitter. Although some people do seem to enjoy when I get distracted and go on Twitter and then they're like, hey, I like to see how you come up with your tweets. 
But uh, I so all of that is just preamble to describe what's going on and. What I really want to talk about actually is is what the experience has been like. So I've just finished um, taking notes on 250 of my word vomits. And that's like, it's a quarter of what all the vomits would be. And it's about a third or slightly less than a third of what I've written so far. And it's been a trip. It's been, uh, you know, so like I, a lot of this writing was written in... 2013, 20, so I'm, I'm like going through the years from from the back to the present. So I started in 2013, 2014, 20, I'm now in 2015. And it's just interesting to think about how many, you know, the, to, to feel the passage of time through my thoughts. It's just a very strange and immersive experience. I'm currently, I'm opening another window to look for it. I, I have a hashtag that I use in Rome to... To every time there's something that I kind of want to follow up on, I add a hashtag that says TBC to be continued. And I have 55 linked references, which means that, you know, so out of 250, roughly one in five posts has something that I feel merits revisiting, expanding, repurposing or something. And uh, it's there's only one in the first 50. There were several more in the second 50. It seems like there's more and more with each. Yeah, so it seems like my quality of word vomits or the amount of things that I found interesting in my own writing has increased over time. And again, this is just the first 250. I don't know what the next 250 is going to be like. And I'm eager to find out. Uh, what else? It's been one of the, I think the biggest thing that's been kind of like knocked me in the head is seeing how, how angry I was about stuff, how upset, how, um, how much how low my sense of self-esteem was. And I mean, well, self-esteem, you know, so my concept of what self-esteem was or self, you know, nowadays I don't even talk about self-esteem. I, I tend to use the frame of self-respect and I didn't really respect myself much then. And I think that's really the variable that matters. You want to, because like, you know, self-esteem is like, do you like yourself? You can like yourself despite other things. But I, I think the kind of the, the core metric or, you know, the thing that really matters is self-respect like that's that's the bedrock upon which you might you know that, that's how i think about it and i don't want to i don't want this video to be about that specifically you know i'm kind of sleepy and tired and i can't think straight but i just want to you know make a note of what it's like to go through two hundred and fifty thousand words of journaling from seven years ago six years ago five years ago and i'm gonna i'll make another one of these at the five hundred thousand mark and i'll make another one of these at the seven hundred and fifty thousand mark what? It's a lot of words, man. It's multiple novels worth of introspection. And so, you know, by the, I, I, and well, so part of why I'm doing this instead of, I didn't want to wait until the final end because I feel like, I mean, I, I haven't enjoyed doing word vomits in a while because I think I feel like I'm repeating myself in a gen general sense. And while I, in the past, I was okay with repeating myself because I felt like I was training myself to get better at what I was doing. It is like music practice. You know, you have to practice the same songs again and again to get it into your system. But I feel like, uh, again, I need to do this like research overview of my own writing so I can f kind of find the gaps and see what are the things that I've been avoiding, what are the things that I want to dig deeper into. I just, it just feels right. It feels right that I should examine what has been written and I, I guess I haven't written in a while so it feels like there's a break it feels like my my body of work is substantial enough that when I pro go through it and I you know like do what I've been doing which is have follow-up steps and things to review and revisit um, I will then be able to spend maybe maybe like so I have 55 follow-ups, but a bunch of them are connected. So I would guess maybe there's about 10 to 15 things to follow up on. That I would, So those 10 to 15 essays that I will write next will be of substantially more use to me and substantially more high quality in some sense than if I had just continued writing. And I, don't, and I do want the project itself to kind of be self-improving and, and like I would like the last 100 or last 50 word vomits to be better than the first 900 you know that would be cool right that would be like oh he got better and better and that shit's really good and then i like to be done with it and then i'll just you know it becomes a, a thing like a, a thing for public record 
and it will be a load off my mind. This has been on my mind since 2012. Once I'm done with that, I'll be able to focus entirely on my ebooks and my YouTube and uh, maybe other things. I don't know. It's, it's, it's the longest thing I've ever worked on. It's possibly one of the primary levers of me kind of earning my own respect and, and modifying my self-concept and my narrative in my head. I used to think that I'm this very unreliable person. And, you know, I or like I'm lazy or whatever. And, and this has kind of helped me work through it. And it's really emotional to read my old thoughts. And uh, it gets me it gets me emotional. And, um, you know, I've tweeted a little bit about this. I... It's just, it's a very trippy experience. It's psychedelic in a sense, you know, because the, the, what I'm coming to terms with is, it's a thing that I knew intellectually, but to experience it is really, you know, intellectually, I knew that there's a sort of central propaganda, a chief propaganda officer inside your head, right? That controls the narrative and it tells you how you've always felt, how you've always thought, what you've always believed, right? It, it comes up with this coherent straightforward narrative at least it does for me and I think it does for most people in the modern civilized western world or whatever and when you just write every day and you read your old writing from years ago you will find narrative violations you'll find like I, I, I never think to describe myself as an angry person and even now if you asked me were you ever if, if let's say you asked me like a week ago right were you ever an angry person I would say yeah I guess I was kind of angry as a Early, in my early 20s but like that that automatically has sanitized without me t- intending to be you know it's just because i don't currently feel angry and so i don't think about how angry i was then you know same just imagine like um ask parents who have who are adults i mean who are like grown parents of grown kids what it was like to live day to day raising kids like you know like the childbirth and the daily experience afterwards, it's like, the it's way more hellish than they will remember in their retelling of it, unless they specifically kept the diary while they were going through it. So, but you get what I mean. There's this narrativization that happens. It's not malicious. It's almost natural to forget things. And one of my theories or my hypotheses, which is being, I think, confirmed and validated in a sense, that is that, you know, if you if you look up people who have accomplished great things, a lot of them took notes. A lot of them were keeping notes of all kinds, you know, Da Vinci, uh, Darwin, a lot of authors, historians, just, just everybody, you know, painters. Like you just, you, you keep, you build a body of work and you keep your own history and notes and you get to verify what your old thoughts were. And the thing is, without that evidence, your mind in will most likely drift and and kind of become you know it's like the amount of of imagine you know think about when you play a video game and there's like a an area of of visual field around the character and then when you go when you when the character goes this way the area of visual field follows the character and then the stuff in the distance kind of disappears or goes dark or whatever and then you kind of forget what was there and and when you write, when you keep writing, you set up these these posts of these light posts or whatever. Ha! Huh, it's just I don't really you know. It's just the point is that keeping a diary prevents you from bullshitting yourself about your past, and I think that forces you to have a more rigorous relationship with the truth. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be an objective truth, right? But it's just relatively, you have to integrate more points of view, right? You can't just use your current point of view and insist that it's current. Like, you have to integrate all of your different points of view throughout time. And when you do that, when you take note of how you felt at different points in time, and then you see what... You you make certain assumptions or predictions, whatever, then you contrast it with what you thought before, and you see that there's a conflict... Like, there are things you will learn from that conflict. There are things where, you know, in the past, you thought something was smart. And now, 
on on retrospect you realize it wasn't or in the past you thought something was dumb and then on retrospect you realize it wasn't or you it was right like so you you're, you're changing assessments over time reveal you know biases they reveal like you know you, you realize you tend to systematically overestimate things in, in a certain context and so you realize oh okay i should probably adjust my my estimation accordingly and my theory is that people who take notes for a very long period of time and evaluate these notes and review them they just develop more robust sense making processes right they just they have a prosthetic they have the magic of context and information they seem smarter because they are interfaced with multiple intelligences including meaning their past selves right and um yeah you can reference that stuff you know if you look up uh zettel kasten i got it right right like that, that, that kind of note-taking system or whatever and it's just i think people don't understand and you you can't you can't understand what the utility of this is until you do it and yeah, when you're doing it along the way, you'll realize, oh, I wish I kept track of that. You know, I saw my friend Aaron tweet something like, uh, I wish that when I had taken notes in the past that I had journaled more frequently about the context, like what I had just eaten or what I was listening to or where I was sitting. Was I in a cafe? Was I at home? When you write those things down and you read it, you get, a, you get drawn back into that memory. And there's all kinds of adjacent things to the, that memory once you've contextualized it that just has 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 utility that you can't explain until and you won't even know why until you encounter some new context in the future that that kind of brings into contrast what happened then for example uh a while like last year or like late last year like december or november i i needed to renew my passport which is just a a casual you know errand right and i had to go to the post office which is at, at the mall near my place. And so at some point I looked out of the, you know, I was looking, I was along the corridor and I was just looking over to the basement or to the ground floor. And I saw there was like a very ordinary Singaporean mall scene, which was that people were shopping and just looking for discounts. Like it's all this bargain bin kind of stuff. And I took a photo of it and I tweeted it saying, this is such an ordinary everyday Singapore life snapshot it's a snapshot of everyday ordinary singaporean life it's just people looking for discounts there's nothing glamorous nothing dramatic nothing nothing special unique whatever it's just an everyday thing like why did i tweet that i just felt like tweeting something and i happened to look and i was like oh you know, i just felt like tweeting it and then you know then a pandemic happened and then now when i look at those pic- and so they are no longer you know those kind of where that that ground floor was is now like a, it's like social distancing stuff, so you can't have that that kind of smooshy, all kinds of people kind of crawling all over the, all the stuff, and uh, that's not gonna happen again for probably a couple of years, right? And so, but when I when I took that photo, I had no idea there was gonna be a pandemic, right? So it didn't become apparent what was the point of doing that. And you know, okay, if I scroll through my old YouTube videos, there are videos that I took of myself playing guitar in my parents' old home, in my childhood home. And when I made that those videos, I was just trying to make videos of myself playing guitar. My parents have since sold that house and somebody else bought it and renovated it and stuff. So that, that house, that my childhood home doesn't exist anymore. And those videos are now some of the only, you know, media that I have of my childhood home. I did not realize that that's what I was doing. And you know, even now, like in this video, there's like my denim jacket and my hoodie in all of my videos. That's my cupboard. You know, that's that, that's my wife's desk at the side. That's my wife's chair at the side. You know, that you can see the IKEA light in the reflection. And just, you know, you see what kind of water I drink. Like it's just, it's all these things you don't think about wanting to keep track of. But when it's gone, when you look back, you'll be glad that you had it and the reason and you won't know in advance why you'll be glad you know like maybe someday i'll be like oh you know that uh, there will be something i have to say about the jewelry but i don't know what you know it, it it's not apparent until later on so it helps to just kind of sketch wild and loose and do lots of different things i wouldn't be obsessive about trying to include everything because i mean the, the, you can't include everything you can't think every thought you can't write everything down you just write as much as you can about whatever it is that that you know inspires you or that crosses your mind and then 
only upon connecting the dots backwards will you see patterns and pictures and, and you know like when I'm reading my old word vomits now I feel an increasing reassurance in my sense of self like it's clearer what are the things that have always been true for me it's clearer what are the things that I've been changing about slowly in a way that I like and uh, I will go into more details in on that in writing and in the subsequent videos but I just want to publish this now as a sort of you know, almost a celebration. I'm happy that I wrote that much. And I'm happy that I have now the the presence and headspace and life circumstance that I can reread that stuff. And I'm glad that it feels correct for me to do. Um, I recommend it. I, if, if you're watching this and you're thinking about it, I recommend starting some kind of writing practice. Just write a little bit every day. You don't have to do a thousand words a day like I try. And I didn't write every day, you know. I, I would sometimes go weeks without writing. But just, I recommend having a blog don't care about what the value is because you don't know it until on retrospect. So just write whatever's on your mind. After you watch a movie, after you read a book, after you meet a friend, anything that feels, you know, don't don't think about it. Just 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 do it for for the fun of it. If you can if you can find fun in it and just play with it, and then keep a record of it, and it will come in useful slash. You know, it, it will, I don't even want to say useful. It will just come back to you. It will be there for you when you need it, when you, which you won't know why. You won't know why you'll need it, but you will find the need for it. And then when it fulfills that need, you will feel embraced by your past selves, which is a very nourishing and, and encouraging process. And yeah, I'm gonna try and go to bed. <laughs> I was hoping to sleep earlier tonight, but uh, I got distracted by, you know. So now, now I'm trying. I'm trying to integrate what Aaron thought, tweeted about, which is to to integrate some some random details that you know in the future. If I rewatch this video, I'll be like, "Huh, that happened," which is uh, I got distracted filling out my room with money with with um, how much things cost. You know, how much does an escalator cost? How much does an elevator cost? How much does an Airbus, uh, the Boeing 747 cost, right? Boeing 747 costs about um, $300 million, $400 million. $400 million. A Singaporean SMRT train costs $12 to $13 million. An escalator costs about $100,000. You know. And uh, yeah, man, I just... Uh, the Large Hadron Collider cost $9 billion. The Hubble Space Telescope cost $10 billion. What you know? It's just it's just a random thing that was part of my day today. You know, I uh, and I'm just including that in a few seconds of video, and someday I will might look back on it and go, oh, hmm. or maybe not. You know, it doesn't really matter. But it's nice to have context, right? Uh, I'm gonna end this now. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about my word vomit project, about my writing, about journaling or whatever. I am gonna. I was already planning to make a video about journaling, and then I decided that hey, I might as well go through this process first and then whatever I learn along the way here will inform that video. It's also why I'm procrastinating on my ebook, Introspect, my second ebook. Because again, I was like, I did all that introspection and I feel like I should do the meta introspecting on my introspection before I publish the book. I'm going to integrate that stuff. Pretty excited. Uh, catch you guys tomorrow. I I'm trying to make it a point to publish videos every day. Uh, I don't expect you to watch every single video. I don't expect anybody to watch anything, but I am trying to keep up a cadence of publishing every day. And it was like a week ago or so that I, I recorded like probably like seven videos at once. So I just published, scheduled a video every day. And I'm going to try and see how long I can keep this up. Where you know, So right now, after I publish this, I will have zero videos in my queue. And maybe tomorrow I'll try and record like three or four videos. We'll see. We'll see. I have a whole bunch of ideas, so I'm pretty excited. Done.